Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Museum Madness! In the last episode, we completed a couple of biology exhibits, and in this episode, we're going to be going on to a couple more. What have we got? Well, we just have one. Geology. So it's not a biology exhibit. I guess this is the natural science column, it's just that most of them happen to be biology, considering that you only really need one geology exhibit for a game of this great level. But this is an interesting exhibit. It's got some interesting music and some interesting science. Basically, this is science about the way that the Earth is made and the way that things work. Our first step, fix the planet. Mick, let us give us the 411. So the simulation is in chaos and we have to take part of a multi-step simulation to restore everything to its proper location. So first off, we have to repair the world. This is actually harder than it looks. Because this isn't the world as we know it. This is the ancient Earth. Uh, the Pangaea supercontinent. So we have to put that back together and try to figure out kind of sort of where pieces fit together. It's hard because there's no real guide as to what goes where. You just kind of have to put stuff in a place where you think it might fit and then hope that it wor works otherwise you know you're gonna keep clicking on stuff randomly and it won't work and you'll get frustrated and you kind of wonder what's going on and I'm not sure exactly where I'm supposed to put this I mean you can kind of see some of the continents and where they're at but uh, there we go and then this one There we go. And we just have to put the big pieces together. And there we are. Now, we have to advance the date of the uh, Earth forward to approximately how it is in modern day. All right, so this is a sort of global representation of where the, uh, the Earth works, or looks, at least relatively recently. And what we have to do now is repair the Earth's strata. So the mountains and everything are all out of whack because the levels aren't correct. So what we have to do is we have to raise and lower the actual Earth and figure out what goes where. Now, this is actually fairly easy. All you have to do is raise everything towards the top until you can see the actual bottom layer of strata here. Now you think this wouldn't be correct because of how far down this is compared to every other part, but that's the way it's supposed to be. There we go. So that's it. That's how the strata works or looks or whatever. Now that that's done, We have one more th thing that we need to do. Volcanoes. Apparently the volcano part of the simulation has also been disrupted and we have to move these around. This is incredibly easy. Literally all you have to do is move parts until they slide together and then boom. Volcano erupts. And that's it. That's how short this exhibit is. It's literally just one screen of those very easy puzzles. Compared to that um, food web exhibit that we had in the last episode, that was practically cake. All right, now that we finished that, we can go on to our last set of exhibits. The first one is prehistoric people. All of these will cover different events or time periods in history. So let's go ahead and start. Now, thankfully, this game is science smart enough to avoid the Stone Age people trope of them speaking all in gibberish or in Uggs or in, you know, talking like, well, cavemen. Not all cavemen would speak like the Hulk, obviously. Hmm. But it looks like the pet woolly mammoth that they were keeping around here 
Ugh, sorry about the yawn. The, the woolly mammoth that was here in the exhibit is beat feet to some other part of the exhibit, so we're going to have to go chase it down. Now, this is one of the most adventure game-like exhibits in this game. We have puzzles to do, and we have dialogue to, to do. So, but basically, all that is is... Whoop! See that? There goes Manny. All right, let's talk to this uh, man right over here. He's busy trying to make fire. And see how eloquent these guys are compared to most K-Men in fiction? It's like, you know, I don't know. I appreciate that. I appreciate that they actually speak like human beings or proto-humans or whatever instead of talking like the Hulk or just speak ta or just grunting like monkeys. So we can, he lets us take the stone that we uh, can use to make fire, but he doesn't have any flint. We're going to have to find some flint. This guy is, let me see, he's a hunter and he's preparing a skin for a disguise, but it's going to take a while because he's obviously scraping it off with just sharp stones. So what can we use to help him? Well, we have something in our backpack we can give him that I'm sure he'll be grateful for to use. So we can, he'll use the knife in exchange for the skin, and we can use the skin for something later. And he just, he's going to give us our knife back after, a little bit later. So we can go ahead and talk to this guy as well. So he says that the mammoth has been through here a couple of times since it escaped. And our job is, we're going to try to... Let me see, where's the cave? So we have to, to get information out of him from about what to do with about the mammoth, we have to prove ourselves worthy. But what is he doing? He's holding fire. So let's show him the light that we have as well. It's not fire, but uh, it is pretty bright. Yeah, the batteries, yeah, that's kind of a thing. So, oh, here comes the mammoth again. We'll just wait till he goes by, and then we can actually enter. There's actually another entrance that we can go to here that we can't get to otherwise in the exhibit that leads us to a cave. This is the secret meeting place of the tribe, and since we showed that guy our flashlight, he lets us know that the mammoth fears fire. So we'll ha have to keep that information in mind. It might be useful later on. So let's go ahead and head on to the right to the next part of the exhibit. Now we have a slightly more advanced group of proto-humans here, and including a couple of women. So we're gonna, or a few women, we're gonna have to talk to all of them again to be able to advance the exhibit. So we let her know that we're searching for the mammoth, but uh, she's afraid that it's gonna eat all their food. And their kid is, you know, he's got the sniffles, and guess what? We happen to have exactly what they need in our backpack. Yeah, so in thanks, she'll let us take some of their food. And the boy lampshades the fact that a kid who's a side rep should technically not be blowing his nose. Like, period. So we can take her food basket. And let's talk to this dude. He's drawing a design out on some leather clothes. So, he notes that it's slow, tiring work because he's basically scraping it out with sticks. Well, we have something that we might be able to help him with. Basically, that's the way this exhibit goes. Oh, here comes the elf. Here comes the mammoth again. Oh, and the elf mammoth is right in the way as we're talking to this guy. How rude. So, basically, for helping him, we... He'll go and tell us another hint if we go and talk to him in the cave, just like with the uh, other group of humans. Proto-humans. So they, these two are threshing uh, grain so that they can use it to make bread and stuff. Hmm. So they're saying that they don't have time to really talk to us, but, uh, you know... Even proto-human women 
like to dress up and you know do their hair up and everything else like that so this game manages to subvert the idea of cave cavemen talking like cavemen but it st still has the women being only interested in beauty, their own personal beauty real progressive So we can take the straw from the wheat that they've thrashed to, well, do something with. Let's talk to this last guy here. What does he say? He's a hunter as well, just like the first one of the other guys that we talked to. We tell him that we don't want to kill the mammoth, we just want to send it back to its home. He says we're a very strange hunter, so he's just going to give us his flint and send us uh, along on our way. Let's grab it real quick. All right, now that we have everything that we can get from the cavemen, the mammoth stomps in and blocks us and just starts trumpeting. And All right, let's just go. So what we need now is a disguise to be able to get close to him and set up well. What have we got? We have straw, we have stone, and we have flint. And we have fruit. Hmm, what can we make with three of these things? So first, we'll use the deer skin to disguise ourselves so we can re-enter the area. We can kind of just walk right past him here. And now... We have to scare him by following the hints that the other caveman gave us. Dropping some straw on the ground, dropping the flint next to it, and then hitting the flint with stones. The mammoth freaks out and takes off back towards the other side of the enclosure. Or back towards this enclosure on the other side of the exhibit, I should say. Blah. All right, and let's go ahead and head this way. And he's kind of just chilling out over here, but he's not back inside the enclosure yet. We have to lure him back into the actual enclosure using the basket of fruit we got. And now that that's done, we have men, the men from both tribes coming in and clo closing it back up the way that it should be closed. And of course, they start tell telling tales about different hunts that they've been on. And then they decide to have a celebration together instead of segregating themselves like they had before. And we have to give the outfit back, but in exchange for the outfit, we can actually get our knife back. So I think it's a fair trade. And we have to go back to the main hall and check out the next set of exhibits. But we're going to have to save that until next time on Let's Play Museum Madness, where we'll be tackling the next set of exhibits. See you later, folks.